All right, hello there YouTubers. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time you're watching. Brian here at Norab WX. Uh, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I was going to do a review on my Tempest Weather Station by Weatherflow. And that's what this video is going to be all about. So I'm going to tell you about it. I'll show you what it looks like on the outside. I'll show you what it looks like on my phone app. And we will have a discussion about it. I'll try to make it short, sweet, simple. Uh, I don't want to bore you. Um, I do tend to get long-winded sometimes, but uh, I'll try to keep it sweet and short for you. So here it comes. All right, so we'll start out out here at the weather station itself. I'll show you what it looks like and um, go over some of the parts of it. Um, kind of two things you're going to want to figure out before you get one of these, or if you're definitely getting one. A, where you're going to put it. Okay, so it needs to be relatively close to the house. I want to say within like 500 feet or so because it needs to transmit its data back to the house. Um, the second part of that you're going to want to figure out is, is an area that it's going to get adequate um you know wind now it kind of sounds funny you know like why would you want to make it get wind but if you want to track like your wind direction wind speed and gusts and stuff like that you need to have it somewhere that's going to be exposed to that so you're not going to want to put it on like one side of a fence you know because then you know the wind from the opposite side of the fence is never going to make it to the to the weather station and you're not going to know you know what the wind speeds were so you want it out in the open you want it relatively close to your house um, I'd say those are the, probably the two biggest things that you're gonna want to make sure you have established um, other than that though it's it's really it's as you'll see it's not an eyesore it's not huge it's not this obnoxious looking thing in your backyard that you're gonna be like I really don't want to look at this you know forever so um, it's, it's small like even out here in my yard like I have a big area here but still like you really kind of even have to look for it to find it you know it's it's not a ginormous um you know weather station so that i think that's a plus too um and i think you know a lot of people would agree with that also so uh let me show you the parts of it here all right so here's the weather station itself this is what it looks like i just have it attached to a two by four here this is an old spool i had um uh, we use for parties and stuff as like a table for the outside um so here's what it looks like i like i said i put it on the two by four i got this in january so you know digging a hole in january in northeast pa with a shovel isn't going to happen so um and here it kind of stayed you know so eventually i'm going to put it up probably a little bit closer to the house but for now this is perfectly fine so this is what it looks like here you can see this triangle now this triangle needs to be facing north and that's for the uh, the wind sensor here. Uh, with this facing north, it's able to tell you accurately what direction the wind is coming from. So you're going to want to orient that north. Uh, these black uh, panels here, they're your solar panels. Okay, for charging the battery. So totally self-sufficient. Don't need electricity at all. Up top, you have the light sensor in the center there. See, that looks a little bit different than the rest. This is actually your haptic rain gauge on the outside here. So this is actually counting the raindrops, feeling the raindrops, can tell intensity, and give it a pretty accurate estim estimation on how much rain you got. Uh, I don't think it's as accurate as actually having like a physical rain gauge outside, but it's not bad for what it is. Um, like I mentioned, your wind comes in under here, and it'll tell you speed and direction. Under here is your temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, uh, sensors all in there and then like I said your solar panel battery now this is attached if you can see this bottom piece here is um, the, the bottom part of the mount this just twists and locks on here so very simple um, I did have one of these fail this is my second one and the first one is no fault of my own um, actually the barometric pressure gauge or sensor went out in it and I contacted Weatherflow. I let them know what was going on. I was getting really like crazy barometric readings, like 23.606. Like it's impossible. No way. So they were actually, I think, able to test it remotely, it kind of seemed like. And they said, um, yeah, Bri, your um, you know, your your barometric pressure sensor's gone in that. So we'll send you a new one and send us the old, you know, um weather station back. And it was like a week, you know, they, it, it took a couple days to get here. 
sent the other one back they got it they wanted to look at it and see you know what the deal was with it so i thought that was really good i mean that's that's excellent customer service had no no issue no questions asked really about anything so that was awesome um so i can't can't gripe about that at all um and i don't think anybody could um otherwise um i got this you know probably there's my house up there so we're probably like 100 yards or so from the house you know not terribly far um you know it's out of my way i don't have any issues with it being in my yard or anything but you know it's far enough away it's not in my way and it's also close enough to send the data if you can tell on here the birds like to sit on this okay as evidenced here um some people reported they had some issues with the birds setting off the rain alerts that you get i think weatherflow has sort of come up with a probably a software update to totally do away with that i've never had an issue with a bird setting it off so i think they've worked that out i think some older videos maybe some older models of these um older software versions probably had an issue with that but i have not it's never gone off for anything that wasn't actually happening um so it'll send you text alerts on rain and it also send you alerts on lightning too and the lightning sensor is you know pretty darn accurate you know um we can see a lightning flash here like near the house and it's within like two seconds you're getting that notification and it'll pick up lightning for like i want to say i've had like 40 or 50 mile away you know lightning strikes it's picked up so pretty impressive it, it really is um the next part of it here i'll show you what the in-house unit is so what you're going to have plugged in in your house to make this thing work all right so this is your oh before i drop it on the ground this is your unit that's in the house okay um it's completely wireless um internet wise i shouldn't say like wireless altogether you do have to plug it in there's your your plug in for it uh, but this thing is like almost the size of like a little bit bigger than a wallet you know you'd have in your back pocket um so you know not going to take up a lot of real estate in your house um you can't hardwire it to like ethernet it's entirely wireless dependent on wi-fi so you know here again find a spot in your house i have this um on one of my rooms they're kind of facing this way so it's you know it's direct line of sight going to this receiver and that's really it um as far as what you need in the house now i'll show you the app on the phone and kind of what that looks like also there's a lot of pieces to that so i'll show you all right everybody we'll do a screen record here on my iphone i never tried this before but i think it's the best way and the clearest way to show you guys how it works um, so, you know, regular iPhone, nothing special. Um, Tempest app is this is what it looks like here. So you're going to click on that app and it's going to bring you to the screen. This is going to be your basic screen that you're going to see pretty much every time you open it. Um, you know, you got your current conditions up the top there. And if you go down, it has like an hour by hour. You can look and see, you know, at what time, if it's going to start raining or stop raining or snow, whatever. It'll show you that. Um, underneath that, it'll give you a, it's like a nine-day forecast or ten-day forecast um, for the upcoming week, which is pretty neat. And, you know, if you wanted to reference a certain day, like Sunday here, it's supposed to snow. Um, you can click on Sunday, and it'll give you an hour by hour of Sunday. And you can kind of get an idea when it's going to start. So it looks like it's, you know, they're saying it starts, you know, 25% there at 5 in the morning. And, you know, 35% by 7, and then by 9, you're up to 55, and then by 10, 70. So pretty neat. And then you can, you know, you can go through the whole day and see you know how that's how that's going so i i like that feature too even like in the summertime if we're going to have a party in the afternoon on like a weekend or something you know you can go on this and, and reference and see you know when they're thinking it's going to rain now anything with a forecast as we all know it's not perfect you know it's, it's it's just an idea this thing changes all the time you know you're gonna have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis but you know it, it gives you an idea and that's really the the whole idea here behind it um upper right corner here you'll see an icon that looks like the device out in the yard 
And when you click on that, this is what the screen you get. So it'll tell you all of your stuff right now outside, your current conditions. And this is actually my iPad upstairs I have plugged in. Um, this is the screen I have it on all the time. So like you want to know what the temperature is out there right now, I just take a glance over at it, you know, and, and can read it. You know, just like any other digital type weather station thing would have, you know, so you, you can look at all of these parameters um, at a glance. So I, I leave it at that. Um, what's neat about this particular section, if you click like on the temperature there, you can look and see, it'll give you a nice graph of the day and what the temperatures were throughout the day. So you could see, you know, in the center down here at 12 o'clock, if you click on that dot, it was 35.2 at, at noon today. It was a chilly day. And the low, if you watch the green here, we're going back in the morning. You know, the low was like, you know, let's see, probably somewhere, usually just before sunup. So 27 degrees last night or so was about the low. But you can, you know, you can reference that. Should you want to do that, it'll do that with rain also. Like it didn't rain today. Oh, there it goes. It didn't rain today, so there's nothing on this graph here on this grid. But, you know, if it did rain, it would show you the intensities at the bottom and, you know, how long it rained for and, you know, what that haptic rain gauge on the top there is thinking you got for a total. Um, so pretty neat. You can, you know, have all that stuff right at your fingertips. Um, if you go to the history tab, you can look at, you can really go down in the weeds with this. Um, right now we're on the all time tab up, up top here. You can see day, week, month, year, all time. So like this, these are my all time, like you can see highs and low temperatures, humidities, um, my barometric pressure readings. And you can see my messed up one there, my 23.91. That was when I had the, the sensor failure because there's no way it was 23.91. Um, you know, lightning strikes. You can reference a specific day, like this, you know, this was today. The low was at 27 there, you could see, and the high got to 39. But if I wanted to go back to, like, you know, when it was really, you know, in the summertime when it was warm, so, like, July 15th, you know, what was it like that day? Well, it got up to 84, you know, and it was down to 51 at night. You know, pretty cool. Um, it's saving a lot of data, saving a lot of stuff for you to reference later on, and, if you're, you know, into recording all that stuff, this is an excellent tool to have. Um, the other thing on here is settings, um, smart home integration. So it does a lot of, st it can do a lot of stuff with the Alexa from what I understand. I don't have an Alexa. I don't do any of that smart home integration stuff. I'm just not into it. I'm like kind of old school, even though I'm younger. Um, I kind of like to keep it simple. So um, I'll turn up my own thermostat. That's cool. Some people like that stuff, but you can, there's a lot of integrations you can do. I would recommend if you're going to, you know, you're thinking about doing a certain one, go online at, on Weatherflow there and, and make sure that, you know, this is going to be able to do what you want to do. Um, I do send my data here that this, my weather station collects to Weather Underground. And it's done through here. I'm not sure. I forget how you do it exactly. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge to set up. But I, once you get it set up, it's done. Um, but I send my data over there. I have an account with the Weather Underground, so they take my data and they use that as well as you know as part of their forecasting. So, um, you know, you don't have to do that if you want to do that. That's totally up to you. Also, making this data like public you know, on, on weather flow too. I, I believe you can set that as to just being a private weather station and really not sharing it. So it, sky's the limit, you know, however you want to set this up, however you want to customize it, um, you know, you can certainly do that. Um, but, you know, I, I like to compare my data to like some, some people locally around here, they have um, some devices. So it's kind of fun to watch like my, you know, temperature, humidities, etc. You know, as compared to those, you know, what, what it is over on the other side of town. Just like the weather nerd in me, I kind of like looking at that sort of stuff. So, um, this can do it. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff here that it's saving and a lot of stuff that you can reference later on. So, um, that's about it for the app. I'll do just a, a quick summarized video and that'll be about it. So, hang on one second. I'll be right back. 
All right, everybody, so that about wraps up the video. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. If you guys have any questions on any part of it in particular, um, let me know in the comments there. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And um, overall, absolutely 100% satisfied with it. If you're on the fence about it, I hope the video helped you out one way or another in making a decision. Um, that's the whole point of why I do this. I, I, I want to try to help people out where I can in, in deciding to buy something. I do it all the time. Like everything I reference, everything I buy pretty much, I'm researching it online and I want to know if it's going to be a good purchase. And so much good content out there on YouTube of people that, you know, uh, do reviews of stuff. And I, I know I for one appreciate it. I'm just trying to give back to as, as much as I can with, with different kinds of stuff that, that I can do. Um, that I could do reviews on and this was one of them that I wanted to get done um, I wanted to give it a while I wanted to give it a good year you know and and see how it survived through the seasons and um, so, you know excellent they like I said I had that issue with the barometer they sent me the new one no questions asked I mean you really can't complain about that um, you know things happen things break and they took care of me I'll 100% support them with that. Um, but no, if you're on the fence about it, I would absolutely recommend one to anybody. There's a lot of the other weather stations out there. Like Davis makes a great product. Davis's are expensive. I was looking at Davis's. They're, if you want to get a real nice one, you're looking at even more than a Tempest. So, you know, choose what you want. You're not going to have a, a bad product either way, I, I think. They, they all make, you know, pretty good ones. Um, but you know, my experience with weather flow, hundred percent happy. So like I said, hopefully it helped somebody out, helped you out like subscribe, um, to my channel. I would like to try to grow the channel some more. I, I enjoy doing the videos. So, um, that's about it for now. Like I said, any questions or anything, certainly leave a comment. Hope everybody has a great Christmas. If you're watching it before then, if you're after that. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.